Welcome to our journey in the Adirondack High Peaks area, and thank you for watching this adventure. As seen in the intro, I'm taking in the view from the summit of Cascade, and Kelly is taking it all in from the top of Porter Mountain, which would be the first of the two mountains we climbed. We got to the trailhead early on a Wednesday morning, knowing that spots can fill up quickly due to the easy accessibility and the high volumes of traffic on New York Route 73. If the lot directly to the trailhead fills up, you have the option of using either the turnouts that are on the east and west sides of the trailhead, which also tend to fill up quickly. Before strapping on my pack, I stepped onto the other side of the road and took a look to what would be our final destination, the summit of Cascade Mountain. After gathering up all of our gear, we were off. Immediately dropping down some stairs, I would say it was just shy of 50 yards where we signed in at the trail register. The anticipation of the weeks leading up to this trip was finally over. It was time to head up the mountain. You ready to ascend? Ready. All right, here we go. Before being called Cascade Mountain, Cascade was known as Long Pond Mountain. This is only speculation on my part, but the falls that flow down, the face of the mountain trickling down between the two Cascade lakes, I assume was found to be more fitting of a name due to the appearance of the falls cascading. Again, this is only speculation on my part. Anyone with knowledge of the renaming history, please feel free to comment below. I would love to know your insight on this. Cascade has a reputation of being one of the easiest of the 4,000 foot peaks to ascend and combined with the amazing views of its bald summit makes it a popular destination for many hikers any time of the year. The hike started off as an easy climb on the route that was laid out in 1974 by the Algonquin chapter of the ADK. This trail replaced the previously steeper and badly eroded trail. As we reached roughly the 0.4 mile mark, we crossed the stream. Due to the very dry summer, it was not much of a flow and it was very dry, as you can see at this point of the video. I'd have to look at the map. After our stream crossing, the trail continued as a moderate grade and was easily followed with the red DEC disc seen frequently along the way. About the 0.7 mile mark, the trail became a steeper grade with a lot of typical Adirondack style boulder trail obstacles to slow down your progress. After a few short breaks, catching our breath, we continued up the steeper of the grade until we hit a ridge line at about 1.2 miles in with a brief welcome flat section. The flat would not last long before reaching a steep climb to the top of the ledge with your first really good view looking back about 1.8 mile mark. Oh boy. When we reached the view, it was a funny moment here where Kelly had thought we had reached the summit of Porter. This isn't. This isn't Porter. Oh, we're not the summit? No. After taking in a quick view, it was only a quick hop, skip, and jump over to the trail junction. We are at the junction of Porter and Cascade. Here is the sign to Porter. Here's the trail to Cascade. We're eventually going to get there, but right now we're going to head this way down Porter. And here we go down Porter. Now that we've heard a little history of Cascade Mountain, I will now share some insight of Porter as we head down the trail. Porter Mountain was previously named West Mountain. The new name Porter was named after its first recorded ascender, Dr. Noah Porter. Dr. Porter was a summer resident of the Keene Valley as well as the president of Yale University from the years 1871 to 1886. Dr. Porter ascended the mountain in 1875 with the hired help from a guide, Ed Phelps. I had heard that the trail of Porter can get quite muddy at times, but on this trip we found it was mostly dry with the lack of rain we have had this summer. 
The trail started off as a moderate grade downhill, which in my head I knew we were going to have to climb back up this grade when we traversed back to the trail junction to Cascade. When we got to about the 0.6 mile mark, there was a large boulder on the right side of the trail. At first I thought it might have been the summit, but I did not see any signage to say so. I climbed on top of the boulder to have a look. From on top of the boulder there was a great view, but to my left I could see the actual summit of Porter, so at that point I knew we had just a short way to get to the top. I can't tell. Let me... I can't tell. Hold on. After taking in a moment of rest and a view from above the boulder, I climbed back down and we continued along a flat ridge of the mountain a short distance that was a bit wet in spots, but still easy to navigate. After pressing through a narrow pine patch, we had reached the summit of Porter Mountain. Unlike Cascade Mountain, Porter does not have a bald summit, but it does offer a beautiful 360 degree view above the pines. It was a great place to take off our packs and sneak in a short rest and lunch before heading back to the junction of the two mountains. Now rested and ready to head to Cascade, I pointed back to show Kelly where we were about to end up. Cascade, Cascade can easily be seen there. behind us. Yeah. But before we leave, we couldn't forget our traditional summit selfie. Now you can see we're back at the junction spot, now heading up the Cascade Trail. This trail leads to an open rock area that takes you straight to the open oh, summit. Poke, man. Though we had to go a short distance to reach the Cascade Summit, it was a steep rock incline to make it to the top. We followed the rocks along the way, making sure to never step off. At this height, we are in the alpine zone, where some very endangered plant species are growing within the ecosystem. You never want to step off or onto them and disturb the soil. Hence the term, do the rock walk, comes in. High peak hikes can be very challenging. We all have times where we have to push ourselves through uncomfortable situations during our hikes. Here's a moment where Kelly had to dig deep and push herself through. She was uncertain of her footing, but after gathering her composure, she continued on. Here you can see our last little push to the top. We had finally arrived to our destination, the summit of Cascade Mountain. It was overcast, but we caught a rare calm day with no winds at the summit. You could hear the birds chirping all around. We took some time resting at the summit and we took a lot of photos. We really enjoyed taking a look at that awesome 360 degree view all around us. It was so nice up top that day we didn't want to leave. I convinced Kelly to put her boots back on so we could begin our descent back down the mountain. She really didn't want to be out Serious. past dark anyways. Way down in the there. We got back up, got our bearings, pointed out Lake Placid and the noticeable <laughs> ski jumps below, and back down the mountain we went. I hope you enjoyed watching our Porter and Cascade mountain experience. Maybe you saw something that will help you along your hike to these two summits. I hope to share more content of hikes like this in the future, so I would encourage you to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed following along. Please leave comments below sharing your Cascade and Porter Mountain experience. Again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you on the trail.